I'll split this three million dollars with mom. Right after my father's funeral, my husband, who had sneakily looked at the inheritance papers I was to receive, told me this. Don't you be greedy now. I finally I can quit my job. I have to thank that old geezer. That old geezer. You can't possibly be talking about my father, can you? Oops, slipped my tongue. Anyway, once you receive the inheritance, put it into our joint account as soon as possible. Hearing those words and in shock, my husband and mother-in-law were excitedly discussing, which car should we buy? I want this one. I had reached my breaking point, offloading household chores onto me, always asking for money, and now, insulting my father. I don't need a husband and mother-in-law like this. Holding back my anger, I purposely smiled and replied, yes, you and your mother can use the money, as you please. My name is Catherine. I'm a 38-year-old working housewife. My family, including my parents, were doctors and ran a popular clinic in our hometown. As an only daughter, I was brought up with a lot of love and care. After graduating from the pharmacy school, I got a job at a major pharmaceutical company. Although my parents were disappointed that I didn't become a doctor, they blessed my career choice and told me to work hard. Even after I started working, I would often visit my childhood home and share meals with my family. We were very close. However, about 10 years ago, my mother passed away in a car accident. Despite being in her 50s, her sudden departure left me in shock and grief. My father was deeply devastated, so much so that he temporarily closed the clinic. During this time, my then-boyfriend, James, was my pillar of support. We met through a mutual friend's introduction. Throughout our relationship, he continuously encouraged me, helping me recover from my grief over my mother's death. Two years after my mother's passing, James proposed, and I immediately said yes. James works for a small to mid-sized company in the food industry, leading a typical office worker's life. Working at a major pharmaceutical company, my income was considerably higher than his, but money wasn't a concern for me at all. I believed that we could support each other through thick and thin, maintaining a loving marital relationship. My father was also very happy about our engagement. I've heard that James supported Catherine when she was down about her mother's parsing. I'm truly grateful for that. Please continue to take good care of Catherine. Saying that, my father narrowed his eyes in appreciation. Standing tall, James responded, I will make sure she is always happy. I looked at the two of them with a warm, happy feeling. The following week, we went to James' parents' house to announce our engagement. His parents had divorced when he was very young, and now only his mother lived there. Meeting my mother-in-law for the first time, I noticed she wore flamboyant makeup, more than I expected. Oh, so you're the one James is marrying. She looked me up and down as if evaluating a product. Don't you think she's a bit plain for you, James? And isn't she older than you? Wouldn't someone younger and prettier be better? Jumping in, James said, Mom Catherine works at M Pharma and her dad is a doctor. I thought James would praise my personality, but it seemed he was only highlighting the financial and social aspects. But hearing that, my mother-in-law's eyes sparkled. Well, why didn't you mention that sooner? In that case, I approve of your marriage, Catherine. Thank you. I replied somewhat hesitantly. James seemed very pleased with his mother's approval, saying, that's great. However, I had a lingering feeling of unease and so, we got married. Just before registering our marriage, my father, who also invests in real estate as a side job to his medical practice, gifted us a luxury apartment in downtown as a wedding gift. Of course, the property is in my name. Regarding that matter, I said to James, even though my father gave us the apartment, it's our home, let's live harmoniously together. James responded with a joyous, squinted smile, and thus, our marital life began. What I realized after getting married is that James, who had always lived with his parents, had almost no domestic skills. He not only didn't know how to cook, but he didn't even know how to use the washing machine, nor did he try to learn. Worst of all, he wouldn't even throw his trash in the trash bin. Being someone who wanted to maintain a neat household, this bothered me immensely. For the first year of our marriage, I was still in the honeymoon phase and took care of everything. But as the fatigue from work piled up, I felt my patience wearing thin. 
Around our second year of marriage, I finally expressed my frustrations to James. He responded, I'm tired from work too. Catherine, you're better at household chores. If you're good at it, why not do it? Despite my efforts, he didn't understand, and our marriage continued with him not doing any chores. But my troubles didn't end there. After our marriage, I clearly realized his mother was quite the character. James was generally indifferent to events, so I would represent him on such occasions. On Mother's Day, on behalf of James, I selected a high-quality scarf from a department store and sent it along with carnations. Then, after a while, I got a call from my mother-in-law. Expecting it to be a thank you call, I answered. However, she sounded displeased. Catherine, I received the Mother's Day gift, but what on earth is it? Uh, well, I believe I sent a cashmere scarf. Sending such an unknown brand is simply thoughtless, isn't it? I was sure the scarf I sent was from a reputable brand, and it was a quality item worth over $200, but she wouldn't hear any of it. I don't need such a dull scarf. How about this high-end brand, for instance? The brand she mentioned was a renowned luxury brand. Buying their scarf would cost more than $1,000. I'm sorry, but that's a bit beyond our budget. Cutting me off, she snorted. Then next time, just send cash for Mother's Day. $500 should do. What, $500? Exactly. Just do it. And for my birthday, I expect more than $1,000, understood. With that, she hung up. When I reported this to James, his response was, Just do as she says. It's for Mother's Day. Think of it as honoring your parents. Since then, we've been giving her money as she demands. Moreover, by our fifth year of marriage, she began visiting often and asking for money. Each time, James would hand her the money with a smile. Both of us work, and James doesn't earn so much to afford this. So, I've had to dip into our savings. Though I felt resentful, I endured. He was there for me when my mother passed away, and we vowed to be together forever. She's his mother, after all. I kept reminding myself of that. Now, in our eighth year of marriage, I still handle all the household chores and frequently give money to my mother-in-law. One day, in the midst of this hectic life, I received an unusual call from my father. The news he shared was shocking. He was diagnosed with terminal cancer and there was nothing more to be done. Hearing this, I couldn't help but cry, and my father gently stroked my head. Now, in our eighth year of marriage, I still handle all the household chores and frequently give money to my mother-in-law. One day, in the midst of this hectic life, I received an unusual call from my father. The news he shared was shocking. He was diagnosed with terminal cancer and there was nothing more to be done. Hearing this, I couldn't help but cry, and my father gently stroked my head. It's fate. We must accept it. Don't worry, I'll be all right. Dad. Thus, in addition to my job and household duties, I began to visit my father in the hospital. My workplace was understanding, but the issue was at home. Despite informing James about my father's condition, he offered no assistance. Well, it must be tough, but hang in there. I'm also busy with work. He said just that, and only visited my father in the hospital once. At that time, my thoughts were consumed by my father's condition, and I had no time to think about James. If I had any spare moments, I wanted to spend them thinking about my father. One day, my father suddenly asked me, Catherine, is your marriage going well? Well, go. Thoughts of James's behavior and my mother-in-law flashed in my mind, leading to my hesitant response. Catherine, you are free to choose your own happiness. After I'm gone, you won't be constrained in any way. Dad, I found myself shedding tears in front of him again. He firmly gripped my hand. And three months later, the inevitable happened. My father passed away suddenly. I was consumed by grief and had to arrange for his funeral. As for James, even seeing my state, he didn't offer any help. Nevertheless, I was too busy to pay attention to James. A large number of mourners came to my father's funeral, and I believe it was a good send-off. Both James and my mother-in-law attended it. The day after the funeral concluded, I received a phone call. It was from a lawyer talking about my father's inheritance. I met with the lawyer and got briefed. The details were astonishing. 
Even after taxes, my father's assets amounted to well over $3 million. Apart from his income as a doctor, he had made some investments, which had grown to this large sum. He had willed all of it to me, his only daughter. Trembling at the sheer amount, I somehow managed to complete all the necessary procedures. While looking at the documents handed over by the lawyer at home, exhaustion overcame me and I fell asleep on the couch. I woke up to the lively voices of James and my mother-in-law. James, mother-in-law? Why are you here? As I spoke out, James turned to me with shining eyes. Catherine, well done. Why didn't you tell us earlier? What? My eyes widened in shock. To my surprise, James was holding the inheritance documents I had received from the lawyer. Hey, why are you looking at those without my permission? It's $3 million. Isn't that amazing? This secures our lives forever. What? As I looked on in confusion, James's expression turned serious. We, my mother and I, will split this $3 million. What? You shouldn't be greedy. Finally, I can quit my job. I owe it to that old geezer. When you say old geezer, are you talking about my father? Oops, I misspoke. Anyway, transfer the inheritance to our joint account soon. Both my husband and mother-in-law were excitedly discussing, which car should we buy? I want this, and so on. That was the last straw for me. He pushed all the housework onto me, took my money, and now insulted my late father. I didn't need such a husband or mother-in-law. Holding back my anger, I deliberately smiled and said, Sure, you and mother-in-law can spend the money however you like. You're so understanding. Well then, work hard, just like a workhorse. I don't want our savings to decrease too much, you know. I was just nodding along to what my mother-in-law said. From the next day, James and my mother-in-law began spending money lavishly. James quickly quit his job and my mother-in-law moved into our home unexpectedly. They would go out early in the morning and come back with several bags from high-end brands. The three-star restaurant we went to today was all right. For newly rich people like us, it felt a little lacking. And they treated me like a maid, having such conversations. I guess James thought my father's inheritance would be transferred soon, as he was withdrawing money from our joint account without my permission. Our savings, which were around $100,000, were rapidly decreasing. What are you talking about? We're about to get $3 million soon, so this amount is no big deal, right? I warn you. But James didn't pay any attention to my words. A month later, James and my mother-in-law left for a trip to Hawaii. Of course, they didn't invite me. After seeing them off, I immediately started actions for divorce. A week later, as I was relaxing at home, there was a loud knock on the front door. When I looked through the peephole, there were James and my mother-in-law back home wearing Hawaiian shirts. What do you want? I asked coldly. James raised his voice. What are you talking about? The front door key isn't working. Oh, the front door key, right? I changed the locks, so it's only natural it doesn't work. What? What do you mean? Looking confused, James and my mother-in-law heard me say through the intercom, let's talk at a nearby cafe. I'll be there shortly. Although they were shouting in protest, they soon left when they realized it was futile. After confirming they had left, I headed to the cafe. Arriving a bit late at the cafe, I found James and my mother-in-law waiting, their faces bright red with anger. Hey, what's the meaning of this? Give us the new key right away. There's no need for that. Looking at their faces, I said, I need you both to leave that house. I handed James a paper. It was a filled out divorce form. What, divorce? You're really thinking of divorcing me? Why suddenly talk about something like that? To them, I calmly asked, by the way, are you two all right with money? What, money? James responded, spitting as he spoke. We should be fine since we're expecting your father's inheritance. There should still be $50,000 left in our joint account. Look, I'll show you. James opened the bank app on his phone. The next moment, his face was in total shock. Why? The money isn't in. She too peered into the phone screen, looking completely baffled. I then informed them. Yes, I transferred $50,000 to my account as part of the property division, so it's not there anymore. What? 
Since we're getting divorced, dividing marital assets is only natural, right? As I casually mentioned that, James widened his eyes for a moment before smirking. Oh, okay. I'll divorce you. So transfer your inherited wealth quickly. Assets gained after marriage need to be divided, right? Um, here you misunderstanding something. Huh? The inheritance I received isn't subject to property division. After saying that, a hushed silence fell over us. They really believed they could claim the inheritance I got from my father. I sighed in disbelief. That's impossible. My mother-in-law, her face red with anger, confronted me. Then go and check it yourself. I coldly told them. James then started searching on his phone. Property inherited by one spouse from their parents becomes individual assets and isn't subject to division. Are you serious? Hey, James and my mother-in-law were shocked. Desperate, James pleaded with me. Hey, Catherine, let's not divorce. I don't have any savings left. I won't be able to survive if you leave me. Seeing him like that, I firmly told him off. Enough with your nonsense. Take responsibility for what you've done. You've treated me like a gold digger and like a maid. I will never forget what you did to me, and I will divorce you even if it means taking it to court. My outburst surprised my husband James and his mother, who let out a pathetic whimper. Leaving them behind, I quickly exited the cafe. Later on, James and I got divorced. The $50,000 I had moved was recognized as a part of the property division, allowing me to finally kick James and his mother out of our home. James, having spent all the money from the property division, was left penniless after the divorce and was then swamped with credit card bills from overseas trips and various other expenses. Eventually, James and his mother had to borrow money to pay off their debts and are now living in a rundown apartment, working tirelessly to repay what they owe. As for me, I sold the apartment I lived in with James and moved into the apartment my father used to live in. While I still work, thanks to the inheritance my father left behind, I'm not facing any financial issues. I'm grateful to my late father and aim to cherish every day.